Okay, let's continue. <coughs> now, we let's remember, review, that we uh, had the economic uh, multiple time series. We just bind, bind it together, all the time series that we created, and we call it the this one. But it had uh, a lot of NAs in it, and so we um, did NA omit to on it to get. Uh, the modeling, what he called the modeling MTS, multiple time series. <coughs> multiple time series just means you've got several time series together. Okay, um, and just to take a look at that, just to refresh our men memory, if we do, we see that we have multiple time series, and the time this is the first time when they uh, all have data in them. <coughs> Actually, we can't really see when that is right here, though. Okay, now, <coughs> next is they plot that. And uh, I wasn't, I'm not, still not sure why it's not showing up as a two row by two column, but it's not. And you get this, and you can, therefore, we can compare them visually. And, um, Next, uh, <coughs> we want to remember that we said that for the horizon plot, we wanted to have um, all of them equal to 100 at the base date of March 1997. We decided to make them all equal to 100 at this date. So we're going to do that now. <coughs> so how do we do that? Um, we're going to find out what the what the value is at March 1997. Now since we, well since um, this time series, we just saw that the time series don't really contain the dates in them. Right, we just saw that here. Right, the time, it's not really, the, there's no more date there. I don't think it's really available or not so easily available. So he uses a kind of weird method to get, um, to figure out what um, <coughs> the time series is on March 1997. He uses this window function, and if we check that, so let's get the help on window, and um, so window takes uh, an argument, the first argument is x, which is a time series, here, and um, then you indicate a start and an end, and it returns a time series as well. So, um, it's kind of a weird way to do it, but maybe it's easy, I don't know. Maybe it makes it easier. Uh, so he takes this, puts it into window, and he uses the same start and end, and um, then uh, <coughs> that will return a value, or that will return a time series object, which he then converts to numeric, and then takes the mean. Now, it just seems like you don't need to go through all that, because it's only a single number. So uh, why do you need the mean of a single number? So I, I think that if we did it, in fact, let's just try that. So here I tried it, taking the mean as numeric, <coughs> and uh, I got 94.5, but even without the using the mean, just doing as numeric, I still get the same number. So that seems completely unnecessary. Now if we do it without even as numeric, we even take away this part, and just do window here, then we get something that maybe not so great. <coughs> Uh, it gives us all this extra information here and here. We don't want that. So using the as numeric on this window, because window returns a time series object, and this, I guess, is a time series object. I guess we could check that by going and put check using the str function. Yeah, it's a time series object. So we don't really want that. So we want a number. So that it's reasonable to use as numeric on it. 
but the mean is seems completely unnecessary. So anyway, whatever, we finally get, this is the value, which was 94.5, on this day. So that's the value for ER on March 1997. So what he does next is he takes the ER and divides every value in it by that number, by this 94 point whatever it was. And um, so he divides everything by that. So on so in particular on March 1997, it's going to be that number divided by the same number, so it's going to be 1, and then he multiplies times 100, so it's going to be equal to 100. And everywhere else it's going to be balanced off of that. So that's um, uh, how we index it uh, using the base date of March 1997. Then he does exactly the same thing for the uh, DGO time series, same thing. Uh, the NA NHS time series, same thing, and um, and so on. And then, uh, so and he calls them, by the way, calls them instead of DGO, or instead of DGO, he calls them IDGO, so it's uh, indexed DGO. Okay, so now we have the indexed ones, and then he combines all of those into his economic MTS. I think we already used this economic MTS before, but now we're recreating it with uh, this particular uh, value, or this particular set of indexed values. So uh, let's do that. Well, actually. I don't know if I did it already, so let's see if I do that. <coughs> okay, and if we do head on this one, well actually it would be interesting to see it at, that's not good. <coughs> Oh, so uh, I guess we started with, <coughs> we went back to our time series, so uh, we haven't done the NA omit on this, on this one yet. So let's go back to where we are, and he's probably going to do that next. First he's going to give it nice names, and then he's going to do NA omit. So let's do that. And then... <coughs> if we do uh, H, uh, I'm sorry, head on the new one, which is now called working economic MTS, that's not going to have NAs in it. So it's going to look like that. Now, we, on March, I don't know how to get March. Let's see, how could we get March? So, okay, stop the video and see if you can find um, all the values here on March, what was it, 1997. So you can use the same, uh, you can use the same kind of technique that we used before to, to isolate those values. Right, we just did it earlier. We just did it somewhere in here, right? So use this kind of technique. So pause the video. And they should all be 100, right? So let's see if you get that. Okay, so <coughs> did you use um, this method here? So well, that should give it to you. So if you do that, you find it here, but you apply it to the whole working at economic multiple time series object, so you get all of them, and they're all equal to 100. <coughs> okay, now the reason he created all these um, indexed ones with uh, that are equal to 100 at uh, March 1997, so we wanted to create the horizon plot. And to do, a, if you're going to make a horizon plot, you, 
you should have all the plots uh, equal to the same value at a particular time. So with that, then he's going to use that one that we just uh, created, the working economic MTS. And um, you can just use this code. Okay, this will uh, do it. It's basically you're using print, um, print you're using the horizon plot uh, function which comes from Lattice. So you have to install Lattice, I'm sorry, Lattice Extra. You have to install Lattice Extra and then you can use this. I don't actually think you need the print here, but I may be wrong. Okay, and I guess there are different color schemes you could use. Uh, I'm not sure where we set the color, but I've seen lots of different colors for horizon plots. But so here, our origin is equal to 100. So we set that. We have to mention that here, but we have to pre-process everything so that they do all equal 100 at the same place. And then say that it, it doesn't have to be 100, but whatever it is, they all have to be equal to the same thing at, at some place. And this is going to be a 1 by 4 layout. So that means um, we're only going to be able to plot 4 um, horizon graphs on this printout. Um, and you could do it uh, for more if you needed more. But our multiple time series object only has 4. So if you tried to print a multiple time series object with more than 4 in it, and you only put 4 here, you wouldn't be able to sh see all four of them, all, all, all more of them. Like if you had five or six of them, you'd only be able to see four of them because of this. I don't know where the color is indicated here. I don't know if this indicates it or not. It seems unlikely. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's plot this, and remember that you're going to need to install Lattice Extra. So when I try to install Lattice Extra, I get this. But I'm just going to say, do you want to restart R? No, I'm not going to. I don't know. Maybe it won't matter. But uh, I'm not going to. Let's see what happens. OK. And um, I'm going to run the code after installing that. Mm, let's see what we get. Okay, so we get the expected horizon plot. Okay, let's stop here, and uh, let's come back to it afterwards.